The 1940s were a time of industry, inventions, and even war. The United Nations Charter went into effect. The jet aircraft, atomic energy, and radar technology were developed. Televisions made their way into family living rooms, and the slinky toy amazed children. Flappers were swinging and doing jitterbug to the sounds of the big bands. It was at this time that through the urging of three men, Victor Brink, John Thurston and Robert Milne, that two dozen internal auditors met for the first time at the Williams Club in New York City and formed a new professional association, the Institute of Internal Auditors. At last, there was a forum to discuss and exchange ideas about their work, and by 1948, IIA chapters were already established in the UK and Philippines. The IIA was less than a decade old and was already becoming international with a brotherhood of 2,000. Then came the excitement of the 1950s. We saw Queen Elizabeth's coronation. Elvis Presley made rock and roll a sensation. And with hip new music came hip new fashions. Sputnik 1 became the world's first artificial satellite. The polio vaccine came to market and Francis Crick and James Watson discovered the double helix structure of DNA. Meanwhile, the IIA projected significant growth in the coming decade. Ray Noonan's presidential theme, Progress Through Sharing, was adopted as the IIA's motto. And we grew around the world with new chapters in Denmark, Finland, Norway, Sweden, Australia, and Japan. By 1959, membership had doubled to almost 4,000. Right around the corner were the 60s, and the first baby boomers came of age. The Beatles crossed the Atlantic to become a singing sensation in America. Many African countries gained their independence. The Cultural Revolution began in China. Forward-thinking internal auditors wore the latest mod fashions. Russia launched the first man in space and new inventions, like the first ATM machine, looked like something right out of science fiction. Back at the IIA, the profession was maturing. A code of ethics was developed, and we began discussing the idea of a professional certification while preparing to say goodbye to Bradford Cadmus, the IIA's first managing director. We celebrated our 25th anniversary at an event in Toronto. New chapters were formed in Israel, India, South Africa, and France. And international membership climbed to 7,000. The 70s was the decade of bell bottoms and the smiley face, and disco balls lit up the dance floor. Several women assumed prominent roles in world politics. Microwave ovens became a common kitchen appliance. The world's first microprocessor was invented, and we were all fascinated with cool new inventions like the mobile phone. It was a decade of amazing growth at the IIA. Italy, New Zealand, Colombia, Singapore, Brazil, Malaysia, and Hong Kong all joined the IIA family. The first CIA exam was given, and the IIA Research Foundation made its debut. IIA staff grew to more than 50, and headquarters moved from New York to sunny Florida. Membership was now 20,000 strong around the world. In the 80s, Halley's Comet crossed the sky, and French and American explorers discovered the resting place of the Titanic. We saw the debut of incredible computerized gaming systems, and were equally fascinated with the low-tech Rubik's Cube. MTV made Madonna a lucky star, and Michael Jackson's glove became an icon. At the same time, internal auditors were concentrating on quality. The first manual on internal audit quality reviews was published. We mandated continuing professional education for CIAs, and we published the first statement on internal auditing standards. A 50% growth of membership delivered 33,000 IIA members into the next decade. While the 90s quickly got underway, astronomy was revolutionized by images from the Hubble telescope. 
Russia and the United States announced plans for the International Space Station. Dolly the sheep became the first cloned mammal. And the Petronas Towers in Kuala Lumpur, Malaysia became the world's tallest buildings. You might say that internal auditors in the 90s were ahead of their time. The Vision for the Future report indicated our profession was changing, and the IIA updated the definition of internal auditing. The Code of Ethics, Standards, and other guidance grew into the Professional Practices Framework. The IIA elected its first female chairman of the board, and the IIA doubled its reach to an astounding 70,000 members, with new chapters and institutes continuing to form all around the world. In the new millennium, science continued to advance. The Mars exploration mission produced images from a faraway land. Digital cameras, flat screen TVs, DVRs, and GPS systems hit the marketplace. And Google, YouTube, Facebook, MySpace, and Twitter all changed the way we communicate. Meanwhile, the profession of internal auditing continued to grow globally. New legislation around the world put internal auditing in the spotlight, and the IIA witnessed the largest surge of membership growth in its history. We moved into a new headquarters building. The first International Professional Practices Framework was published. The IIA began offering certification exams via computer-based testing around the world. The 100,000th CIA was from South Africa. A new global website has even been launched. The world and the IIA have seen a lot of changes and a lot of advancement over the past 70 years. And each and every year, the IIA has made progress through sharing by fulfilling its mission of providing dynamic leadership. So to the Institute of Internal Auditors and its 170,000 members around the world, congratulations on this achievement and happy 70th anniversary.